Last question. You could take it in a couple different ways since you're a teacher and a coach here in Hastings. What is your favorite part of teaching and coaching right here in Hastings? Oh, it's so easy. It's the connections. It's the relationships. Emily Tui and Gabby McDowell were sitting right behind me yesterday on the, the bus ride home from a match. And Emily asked a question. She goes, is it so bad if I can't imagine living anywhere but Hastings? And I said, no. And not everyone in the van agreed. Like Maddie Haynes is definitely going to move somewhere else and probably never come back, right? But Gabby and Emily and I talked about the idea of how much of a community Hastings is. And actually awesome about yesterday is I stopped at Panera Bread with the girls in Woodbury. And there was Isabel Martineau, who I taught and coached, who's now five years removed. And of course, I can't leave there without talking to her. And I, I like sports a lot. There's no doubt. But what I love is just the chance to be a part of these kids' lives and just to, to go through it with them. It's just, it's so much fun to, to relive high school and really these important moments through those experiences with the kids. So why do I coach and teach? It's literally just that. The relationships are amazing. These kids give back so much. Uh, you talked about Panera, but that's a regular thing. And it's everywhere. It's amazing how often I'm somewhere and I run into a former student athlete, whatever. When I went out of town for the summer, Kit Rudy stayed at my house and watched my dog. Brooke Weber, I was at her wedding. Courtney Boucher, I watched her uh, doctoral dissertation online. That list goes on, and I still talk to Charlie Carpenter about politics and the economy. Literally, we text weekly. And so the relationships with these kids isn't a fleeting. Mark Hunnicky gave Charlie Colvin his first set of golf clubs, who I gave to Paul Olson for his kids for their first set of golf clubs. And Mark Hunnicky now lives four houses down from me. Um, Pete Schultz was a freshman my first year I coached and taught in Hastings. And now he's across the hall as a colleague. And when you think about all those sacrifices that we make and all those sacrifices my wife makes and my kid makes, it's not worth it to me for a game, not worth it to me for a win, not worth it for me for a kid to get a scholarship. But it is absolutely worth it every time to be part of that experience for them. If you had to give parents and coaches a few pieces of advice from your experiences, what do you think it would be? I'm going to combine two things uh, from two people I look up to. The first is from Mr. Dress, an English teacher who before AP tests had kids chant, it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, the wins and losses don't matter. They, they mean something. We keep score for a reason. But when you're 40 years removed, it's not going to be the wins and losses that remember. It's going to be the experience and the journey with them. And so really focus on what you want. I'm not sitting here thinking about my son and his varsity football run to the state championship at all. I'm sitting here thinking about what better human beings can I surround him with than the ones he's going to get lucky enough to have. So enjoy the journey and trust in the fact that, that the overwhelming majority of people in this profession are really good people who care. And then the second piece is from Steve Benson. Man, it goes quick. Don't blink. It is, we're 20 calendar days or not calendar but 20 school days before my kid basically done being a freshman and then i'm down to three years of getting to watch this and be a part of it and i'm gonna miss it mm -hmm. definitely agree with you now you've been working with these kids for a long time the student athletes me with the same piece of advice there <laughs> don't blink because it's going to be gone in a second but if you had a look at those kids give them a couple pieces of advice what do you think it would be the first is the toughest and it's the one we don't like which is be honest with yourself about who you are do you love the sporting? Do you love being with the people? And both are great answers. Um, but being good has a cost. And be honest, are you willing to, to pay it? Kiki Radke, in my time here, is the most successful girls hockey player that we've had. But this is in no way an insult, but she was not the most talented. She was fast. Kiki Radke was hand down the hardest working athlete I've ever seen. Boys or girls that I've coached. And most people don't want to do I didn't want to do that. I wasn't willing to sit in the garage my junior year for hours on end shooting thousands of pucks. If you really want to be that good, are you willing to pay the price? And if you're not, that's okay. But my biggest piece of advice for athletes is know who you really are and what you're willing to pay. Because where we see so much emotional turmoil for athletes, it seems to me to be when those two things don't align. I want to be but I don't want to pay the price 
In other words, do you really want to be or do you just want the result of it? You don't have to be a, a college athlete to have a great athletic experience. You don't have to be a professional athlete to have a great athletic experience. It shouldn't be about three years from now and do I sign and do I commit? It should be about this year.